Now on Sunrise, calls for justice turn violent overnight in Louisville after no officers are charged directly in the death of Breonna Taylor. Two police officers shot in the chaos. Outrage across the country over the lack of charges for the officers involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor. I'll show you what protests looked like here at home. And the grand jury's decision has people all over the world talking this morning. I'm sorting through comments to get you involved in this morning's biggest talker online. Pack the umbrella today. Cool temperatures with showers and storms later this morning. A new COVID-19 vaccine ready for phase three trials. What makes this one different from the rest and why doctors are keeping a close eye on its results. Then shedding the stigma, dying out for life taking place today in the Twin Cities. How you can help struggling businesses and the fight against HIV and AIDS. And it's the size of a school bus and headed right by Earth where you can spot a giant asteroid. It's Thursday, September 24th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this Thursday. A lot to talk about, including rain coming down right as people head out the door. This is a look from Mobile 11. It's on the roads, as you can see in that area, some light rain coming down. Yeah, you can see the reflections on the road there. We're already seeing the effects of that rain. Several crashes to get you caught up on. Ellery will have that for us in just a minute. But first, we've got to go to meteorologist Guy. And uh, Guy, where is the rain right now? Yeah, right now, the rain actually in the metro, but especially south and west. Uh, that's where we're seeing a lot of lightning associated with some of these cells that we're picking up on radar. That's because uh, a lot of it's riding uh, the moisture where a lot of that uh, dew point and humidity is still rather uh, warm and muggy out there like Redwood Falls right along the Minnesota River Valley. That's where we're seeing most of the lightning and you can see once I activate the lightning and on the northern half just showers with some embedded moderate downpours at this time. So most of the heaviest uh, of the stuff staying off to the south and west and this will continue to track off to the south and east and later impact uh, the metro as we get into the morning hours. Highs today a little cooler than yesterday at 75. Winds will be out of the east at five miles per hour. All right, thanks, Guy. You know, traffic, it's been a mess this morning. We uh, are counting our fourth crash in the metro. So this one you see behind me, this is in the Rogers area, 94 at Highway 101. You can see there's some traffic backed up. Doesn't help that there's construction in the area, so that just slows things down as well. We're also tracking one uh, in the Osseo area that we've been following along 169 as well. Uh, and then we want to show you a video from earlier this morning. This one, they're still kind of working on this. This is in the Edina area. Uh, off of 169 in the London Dairy Road ramp. So basically what police are telling us is that six people were in a stolen vehicle. There was a chase by police and then a crash. Those six people were taken to the hospital. We don't know their conditions at this point, but so that area is still kind of getting wrapped up at this point, but not causing any major backups. Uh, so I'll be watching more of what's happening in the metro as that rain comes down those roads, Chris. Thanks, Ellery. Let's get to some breaking news. Streets are starting to calm down in Louisville this morning following a violent night of protests in downtown Louisville. Two police officers were shot this morning. We're learning one of them is in surgery. The other is alert and stable and take a look at this new video out of Denver An SUV plows into a group of protesters in the street. Now that person has been arrested in other cities. There's scenes like this protesters in LA, DC, New York, Atlanta, and here in the Twin Cities taken to the streets demanding justice for Brianna Taylor. All of this comes after a grand jury's decision that no Louisville police officer will be, will be directly charged in her death. And we have team coverage this morning breaking down this story so you know all the facts. Let's toss things out to Kaya and Kaya. The decision hitting close to home here in the Twin Cities. Yeah, no surprise that in the home of George Floyd that people would also protest the lack of charges for the officers involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor. It is important to note, though, that last night here in the Twin Cities, protests appeared peaceful. They started by gathering here at the Capitol. You can see from our chopper just how many people were there from organizations including Black Lives Matter and Com Minnesota Communities Against uh, Police Brutality. They met for about an hour and then marched onto 94 and back to the Capitol. Some people who spoke called the Kentucky Grand Jury's decision disgusting and disrespectful to Breonna Taylor's memory. If Breonna don't get it, if Breonna don't get it, and that's not just a chant. Those are words we live by here in the Twin Cities. 
Absolutely. People also gathered outside of the Ramsey County Jail, so it was an active night. But again, overall peaceful from what we've gathered, and things out here are quiet at the Capitol, despite a couple of uh, squad car cars parked outside of here just to monitor in case. Uh, people definitely showing their frustrations all across the country, including here in the Twin Cities. Thanks, Kyle. And as we mentioned, no officers were charged directly for the death of Brianna Taylor. One now former officer, Brett Hakinson, faces three counts of first degree wanton endangerment for firing into apartments of Taylor's neighbors. Hankinson is out of jail this morning on $15,000 bond. Louisville police uh, officers executed no knock warrant back in March. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend thought it was a break in and shot at officers. They returned fire, killing Taylor. Our investigation found that Mattingly and Cosgrove were justified in their use of force after having been fired upon by Kenneth Walker. Last week, the family agreed to a $12 million civil settlement. They called for charges of at least second degree manslaughter, though. Their lawyer are calling the decision outrageous and offensive. No, we still have work to do. We still are pushing for justice for Brianna. We still have the FBI investigation. And Ellery, this is definitely sparking a lot of conversation online, stretching across the globe. Yeah, absolutely, Chris and Gia. You know, hashtags like Say Her Name and Justice for Breonna Taylor are all over Twitter. Politicians, celebrities, and athletes expressing their frustration and anger that the officer was not charged with causing Taylor's death. And Martin Luther King III saying this is a sad day for America and for justice. In his tweet, he's urging people to vote on November 3rd, saying that this is why elections matter. Attorney Ben Crump, who's representing Taylor's family and George Floyd's family, called the decision outrageous and offensive. Jalen Brown with the Boston Celtics told reporters, quote, I wasn't surprised. I think that this society, the way it was built, its intentions was to never protect and serve people of color initially. Joe Biden tweeting, quote, we must continue to speak Breonna Taylor's name, support her family still grieving, and never give up on ensuring the full promise of America for every American. Now, he and his running mate Kamala Harris also saying that they're keeping the police officers who were shot overnight in their hearts, and that violence is not the answer, and that we must find a way to express grief, anger, and demands in ways that reflect the world we wish to see. And President Trump also tweeted that he is praying for the police officers shot in Louisville and says the federal government is ready to help in Kentucky if needed. Now, the president did not tweet after the charges were announced yesterday, but in a news conference, he said the Kentucky Attorney General is doing a fantastic job. Now, obviously, a lot of people online upset, but Kentucky's Attorney General and the grand jury say, look, you know, the evidence presented shows that the charges uh, fits fits in this case. Yeah, and I know people say yes, you know, they've gone through the process and this is this is the outcome, so we have to deal with it. But I think there are a lot of people out there who are very sad, frustrated, angry that this is yet another example of the system not working for them. Yeah, and a lot of them taking to the streets mm -hmm. last night. Thanks, Ellery. All right, the story is still developing. So for the latest on the protests as they unfold, be sure to follow us on air and on social media as well as care11.com. Happening today, Vice President Mike Pence will stop in Minneapolis for a Cops for Trump listening session. Before coming here, the VP will make a stop in Eau Claire. Let's take you live now from D.C. this morning. The president expected to pay his respects to late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is lying in repose at the high court today. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. We start with an update in that house fire yesterday in Brooklyn Center. Police say a Trump campaign sign and flag may be the reason a house was possibly targeted. Police say firefighters saw Biden 2020 and other phrases spray painted on the garage before it burned down. No one was injured. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information leading police to the suspects. We're just 40 days from the election. Yesterday, a large group marched to the state capitol to have their voices heard before November 3rd. They believe some lawmakers are trying to divide the country instead of bringing people together. So they showed a united front to stand up for each other. People also had a chance to register to vote. When it comes to celebrating Halloween safely, the Minnesota Health Department says we should follow the CDC guidelines. Those guidelines emphasize that traditional Halloween activities are not necessarily safe, but there are alternatives for you to consider. That includes leaving individual bags of candy at the end of your driveway instead of having a bowl and opting for an outdoor activity instead of a haunted house. Sad news in the football world, Gail Sayers has passed away at 77. 
He was a Hall of Fame running back for the Chicago Bears. Sayers' relationship with teammate Brian Piccolo, who died in 1970, became the basis for the popular movie, Brian's Song. And that's your Thursday Morning Rush. Guy, yeah, quick, what's our one thing weather? Showers and storms already impacting our morning, and it looks like it will impact the bus stop forecast today, but by noon in the ride home, that's when we make progress. Hey, some good news on the traffic front at 610. Looks like this crash in the Osseo Brooklyn Park area has now cleared. You can see traffic is no longer backed up. This is the Highway 169 and County Road 81. Well, we've heard from parents and teachers and now the kiddos. Hey, they're sounding off how students here in the Metro say the school year is going. Then Costco is pulling some cheese from shelves. Why it's got nothing to do with a recall. Plus, did you know a massive asteroid is zipping by Earth right now? Right. Guy tells us if it's going to cause any problems here. 